Greetings, PlosTube. It is Tuesday, September 25th, 2018. It is 7, 10 p.m. And I just wanted to come in briefly with um, a fabric dyeing update. Um, I did a few more pieces over the weekend. Um, Saturday, we had our football game. It was a home game. We beat UNC Charlotte 49 to 31. And um, in bigger news, my sister's alma mater, Old Dominion, beat Virginia Tech, which pretty much basically tells you how crappy Virginia Tech is this year, because I'm not sure ODU should have beaten them with as bad as their previous game was. But, you know, that's precisely why I never assume any game is unwinnable. Um, you know, the whole David and Goliath thing. But anyway, I'm digressing. So Sunday, my cold finally caught up to me that I've been trying to catch all week. And so in between sleeping, I decided I was going to do some ice dyeing. I had ordered some more dye and some soda ash from the Dharma Trading Company and just thought, well, you know, up to a point, I don't have to do that much to it. So, um, you know, that was the only thing I really felt like doing besides sleeping all day Sunday. And I have a a ton of old fabric, um, mostly like neutral linens and a few pieces of Ada, some even weave. So I decided, what the heck, I'll give it a try. So I basically dyed two pieces of linen, one piece of 28 or 32 count even weave and a piece of 14 count Ada. Um, and I'm really pleased with all the results. Um, I do have one that's a favorite here, and I have no idea what I would possibly use it for, but that's, I guess, part of the fun of, of dyeing your own fabric. Now, this first one is 14 count Ada, and I will be honest, when I took the Ada out of the package, it had that real stiff, nasty feel that makes a lot of people not like to use it. But of course, the first step, as I mentioned in my previous video, is you wash it with a textile, a professional textile wash to take out any sizing and chemicals that might resist the dyes. And it was amazing how much softer it felt just after I washed it. So while it still is a bit stiff, I would say it feels a lot better than it did right out of the package. Now, this one I used, the base color is Elven Lily, which is a nice purple. And then I also used sea foam, which if you remember from my previous video was kind of a teal. But in this one, there's only a few spots where the teal came out. Um, for the most part, it stayed kind of a bluish gray, which is interesting. Um, of course, all the white spots are where uh, there was no ice which, you know, I try to cover my fabric, but I don't necessarily need it to all be the color. So I'm really pleased with how modeled this one turned out. Actually, I think this side is even the better side, but the Elven Lily was a nice kind of purpley, bluey purple, which as you've heard me say before, I like the purple that trends toward the blue side of the color and not the red. So I really like this one. No idea what I would stitch on it, but you know, that's half the fun, like I just said. Now this one, I was trying to go for a Halloween vibe. <sighs> I'm not sure if I like this one or not. I mean, it definitely has a Halloween vibe going on. It's a piece of 32 count linen. And the base color I used was called Soft Orange, which as bright as this is, I don't see why they call it Soft Orange. I would have assumed more like a pastel-y kind of orange. And then I used Wedgwood Blue, believe it or not. But I guess the blue, when you put it with the orange, kind of turned brown. So that was kind of an unintended consequence. Because I was trying to go for something sort of similar to like a Syracuse vibe with blue and orange. But I forgot that if orange gets muddled up with other colors, it turns brown. So it wasn't exactly what I intended. Um, I don't know how well you can see. If you can see right in this part of the fabric here, there's almost like a grid pattern there. That's because I had these all bunched up on a, like a cookie cooling, cooling rack. Um, and I guess that was the part that was scrunched into, into the um, grade of the uh, rack. So it kind of picked up like a little bit of a square grid. This might be cool, like I would think like if you've had a pattern where you were stitching a skeleton and it was all just a monochrome white, that might be cool for this. It's just not quite what I intended, but 
then again, as random as the um, process is with the ice melting, you're never going to come out with it. It's not going to ever look quite like you think it will. But I would call this a uh, nightmare, <laughs> like Nightmare on Elm Street or something. This one I would call um, Purple Passion, I think. I don't know why I'm naming them. It's not like I'm going to sell my fabric. Now this one was just completely because I forgot what color plum actually is. I was assuming the plum would be like a dark purplish black, but this one, the base color I used was plum blossom, and then I used a little silver lining, just a scotch of silver that barely showed up in here. And then this is the one I was talking about where the orange from this wild number here kind of ran into this fabric, but it's still cool because pink and orange do go together. Um, it did turn out, this was the 32 count even weave, and as you can see, it's very, very pink. Um, on this side, you can kind of see where it sort of bled out into like the darker um, magenta, which was, you know, like the, the magenta kind of bled out into the lighter pink. And you can see there the orange blotch that came from the other fabric, but I don't care. Orange and pink go together. It, it's kind of cool. Again, I don't know what I would stitch on this. And I don't know that I would stitch anything because I don't like that the big place where there was no ice was smack in the middle of the fabric. Um, but I do like up here where it's kind of where I guess when I sprinkled the dye on the ice, it just kind of had little blotches there. So this one is interesting. But my absolute favorite one, and I have to admit... I'm going to have fun doing more of this and just experimenting with different color combinations is this beauty. Now this was a base of pewter gray with chamois, which is kind of like a neutral beige, but look at how all that turned like really nice and dark. Um, the pewter is more the lighter color, which was actually my base color that I put down first. And then I sprinkled the chamois on top, but I guess because the chamois was technically the darker color, it had it, dif it um, diffused through the fabric more. Um, this fabric also has some more of the squares from the uh, cooling rack on it, which is, I think, a cool effect. And again, uh, this is a 32 count even weave, and I'm pretty sure you just have to stitch something all in white on this, but it turned out really cool. This is my favorite of the group. Um, like I said, it's all about experimentation, putting different colors together, you know, scrunching the fabric up in different ways. I mean, if you wanted to tie dye, you technically could with this, um, with this particular technique, but I like the chaos of just dumping the dye in, because like you can see here, there's no rhyme or reason to that, but that's what makes it cool. And even when the colors don't quite come out the way you think they will, I mean, like this one was a huge surprise to me. But it's still cool. It's still cool. Now, if I were going to use this for anything, I'd probably use it for something very small, and I'd probably trim off that white part because that just seems so glaringly like obvious. I don't, I don't like the white part. I would probably just give it a trim. I have no idea how to stop the edges on the linen from fraying. So if any of you out there have ice dyed before and you know how to maybe prevent this, if you could let me know because that's really kind of annoying, but I haven't figured out how to stop it because even when I use linen, it's just a piece of linen I've bought. The edges always fray unless they're surged. And maybe that's the trick, but nope, I don't even have a sewing machine. And I do not want one because that's another rabbit hole I need to fall down, right? I mean, it's enough that I've got enough hobbies to last until I'm 734 years old. But but um, anyway, I just thought I would share those. Uh, not too much here to this video. Um, like I said, I've started calling the short videos that I make um, the interludes just because they're not my usual, you know, haul and progress videos and possible finish videos. Um, I did have a finish last week. It was the tribute that I'm stitching for Coach Gorham um, for his office. Um, I got it done uh, Wednesday night and got it to the framer on Thursday, so I'm going to be able to pick it up 
not this com not this coming Thursday, but next Thursday, um, at which I'm going to give it to Bill to present to the team on my behalf because I can't be there. And Saturday they wouldn't have a chance for me to do it before the game. That's not. Saturday mornings before games are the quiet focus time, and that's not an appropriate time to do it. So I'm going to send it with Bill on the 5th um, to the office, and I just told him, will you have one of your students or somebody film it so I can at least see what everyone's reactions to it is. Um, I did the hindsight football pattern. I'll show it. I'll do an interlude video when I get that back from the framers next week um, just to show you what it looks like. But it was the hindsight football pattern. Um, I don't know if you've seen them or not, but it's basically the one that has the letters that spell out football and then ch the charms. And I added Coach Gorham's name to it um, and the schools, all the schools where he coached, uh, which is UNH. And I put him in the order in which he coached there. UNH, he played there, and then he was a graduate assistant. Then he went to New Haven, Brown. Then he came to UMass, and he was at UMass during the 98 national championship season and then he went to Sacred Heart which is where he was when he got sick um, so because the sixth is the anniversary the 20th anniversary tribute to the 98 national championship team I thought it would be appropriate to present it to the team to the uh, op staff that week so I will do an interlude of that I have actually made some progress in my stitching that piece for Paul was pretty much front and center because I was working on a deadline but now that I'm done with that I'm gonna go back to working on my harvest full of flowers um, I have started the Queen of Freedom the Mirabilia Queen of Freedom on 36 count fabric which I don't I don't know how anyone uses 40 count 36 is gonna be enough with for these tired eyeballs but in my lamp that's behind me, I have a 200 watt bulb and I do use my plus one readers when I stitch. So that, um, that is going to help. And it's actually not quite as difficult as I thought it would be. I thought 36 count would be impossible to use, but it's not really once your eyes get used to it. Um, basically, I'm using 36 count so that I can still stitch it on a fat quarter because I don't want to try to wrangle a fat half of fabric in a hoop and stitch in hand that or stitch it in a hoop that way um i don't have room obviously for a um for a frame and i don't use q snaps because just to me after a certain size they're kind of awkward to use so i use my hoops and i thought if i tried 36 count fabric i could at least um you know keep it to a fat quarter of fabric so um i will have a progress update probably not until next week sometime because i'm going out of town thursday to visit with my family while bill's in ohio with a football game um i am going to take some stitching with me but you know and i'm sure i'll have a lot of time to stitch but uh saturday i won't because i'm going to go to one of my nephew's band competitions um, it's like the, the big one of the year, so his marching man is in it, which coincidentally was my marching man in high school. So I'm probably going to get all the feels from that because I literally have not seen my high school marching man since I graduated 25 years ago. And my nephew is the snare drummer who leads the drum line in the cadence, so that's cool. But um, other than that, I mean, I had to get my ticket to go home Thursday because it was nearly impossible just to schedule a Friday to Sunday um, flight. So I'll have Thursday night and Friday night to stitch and then Sunday in the airport on the way back because I have to fly from Hartford to Atlanta to go to Richmond, which makes no sense. But again, affordability of tickets was an issue. So um, I'll probably get some stitching done while I'm gone. And then I'll have some things to show. I do have some st some stash to share. Um, my parents gave me a hundred dollars worth of picture this plus fabric for my birthday, but they don't know it because I haven't told them yet. They sent me money uh, for my birthday, and I used it to um, buy some fabric, some neutrals that I needed um, for a couple of pieces I've got planned in the future. And I have also gotten a couple of things from hand dyed by Rolanda off of Etsy. Um, and I already did my Joe Degree Designs, uh, thread stash video and my last little floss tube interlude. So, yeah, so I have some videos coming up, I'm sure. And, um, 
Until next time, I wish you happy stitching and a happy life. See you later.